before the Wu-Tang Clan, in the 1980s, it was about politics and political and Afrocentrism. And then we went through this period of, of gangster rap and nihilism and getting high and Cypress Hill and the chronic. The Wu-Tang Clan wasn't about artifice. It was about art. Enter the Wu-Tang, 36 Chambers, the first album. It brought the grittiness back to hip hop. First song I heard was Protect Your Neck. It was just seven, eight dudes just going, going ham on the track. The video of Protect Your Neck was, was very raw. You've got this crew from Staten Island. The sound is nothing like we've ever heard. The album doesn't even sound mastered. It came across as chaos, but there was definitely some order, you know. RZA laid the foundation for everything, and he had this array of ill MCs that just were able to attack, and he beat at any given moment. That shit was unexplainable. What they were doing, nine motherfuckers. We just talk about the this, this discrepancies of Mob Deep and the things that Smith and Wesson probably went through, and Capone and Noriega probably went through, and EPMD probably went through. Do you imagine nine motherfuckers? What? From the slums of Shaolin, Wu Tang Clan strikes again. The Rizza, the Jizza, old dirty bastard, inspector deck, they pour on the chef. You guard, ghost face killer, and the method. It looked like confusion, but out of confusion and chaos comes order. Once the order is established, then the, the, the confusion becomes organized. The first time I ever saw Wu Tang was in a Thrasher magazine listed under like acceptable music for skateboarders like Beastie Boys, Tribe Called Quest, Wu-Tang Clan. Like. Just look at the name in itself. They're called the Wu-Tang Clan and I think people want to feel that like they belong to this movement. They want to show that they support this movement. I remember Wu-Tang being the inspiration for us to name our hoods Iraq and Kuwait and to em em embody things of the Middle East because they were doing karate hip hop. <laughs> RZA went beyond just the appeal of the fighting aspect and really seized on the philosophy behind it. It's really apparent through their music and their lyrics that it's not about the martial arts, it's about the philosophies behind it. Wu-Tang Clan was definitely unique as far as the knowing what they had. Like, the RZA had the foresight to see, like, yo, we have this group, we're all talented, but let's branch out into these different labels as individual acts. And nobody in hip-hop had really done that before. You know how we came up, Wu? We came up swinging. Felt like we was breaking out of the shackles. When they started dropping that first wave of albums, starting with Method Master Cal, then you had ODB Return to the 36 Chambers, the Dirty Version, Jizza Liquid Swords. Before that, you had Raekwon, Only Built for Cuban Links was a classic, and you had Ghostface Killer Iron Man. Will the Wu-Tang Clan get back together? Why should they need to? The Wu-Tang Clan is not just a group, it's a moment in time. But if they never put out another album, they did something incredible for hip-hop that will live forever and be immortal. When you look back, it would never be another Wu-Tang. I'm not even into disc records, but if another group came out with nine people, I would probably make a disc record against them. Because don't do that. Like, leave them alone. For us to still be relevant after 20 years says a lot about our music and who we are. We have longevity in our music. Some things are just a fad and it's popping for right then and there. You know, but Wu-Tang is forever. <laughs>